It's been a while. It's been a long while. But I have a great excuse, okay? See, what happened was... Yeah. You see that little bassinet over there? There is a little tiny person sleeping in there. And her name is Journey Simone. Yes, I had a baby a week ago. And there's my first one right there. Her name is Trinity Rose. You guys saw videos of her when she was born, right? Say hi. Hi. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, that is my three, almost four year old who you guys saw being born in my first vlog. And yeah, I just had another baby a week ago. Um, I started my channel back up last year and life just kind of got a hold of me, but I really want to come back with some dopeness, with some fashion, with some mommy fashion and just some, you know, everyday round away girl fashion too. But yeah, so I had a baby. She is a week old today. I'm going to tell you guys a quick rundown of my actual pregnancy, how that experience was, and then my second C-section, how that experience compared to my first experience, okay? <sighs> Craziness. So in about July of 2019, I found out I was pregnant. Yay! But also I was like not ready for that necessarily. <laughs> I was kind of getting in the groove of like doing things that interest me and like, you know, just having fun, being free. Um, Cause once you have a baby, you know, you be on lockdown and it's a great sac sacrifice, but it is a sacrifice. And so I was just kind of, you know, kind of enjoying life and just being free. I'm still a mom, so obviously I'm not that free, but you know, going out with my friends and open mic nights, I was in a fashion show. I was just, I was doing me. I was doing things that interest me. And so, yeah, found out I was pregnant, was pretty surprised and excited at the same time. Uh-oh, she's squirming over there. <laughs> anyway, found out I was pregnant. Uh, first trimester was trash per usual. I was very, very sick every single day, all day. It was just horrible. And that's the same way it was with my first child, which led me to believe like, oh, I'm probably gonna have another girl, but let's, let's just see how this all works out. And sure enough, I did have another girl. We found out at 16 weeks that she was a baby girl. And uh, we were super excited. We already know what to expect with the girl. And we have a ball with Trinity. She's just adorable and sassy and funny and all that fun stuff. So we were super excited. Um, found out we were having a girl. And around, I want to say maybe four months pregnant, four and a half months, that's when my sickness kind of started to subside. I worked through the whole thing. I was at work every day, just sick as a dog. I only lost about five to six pounds, whereas my first pregnancy, I lost 11 pounds, gained it all back and some. Um, this pregnancy, I gained a total of about 40 pounds, and that's from my start weight to my end weight. So I didn't count, if I count the, pound, the pounds that I lost, it would be about 45 pounds. Um, and that's around the same as the first, first pregnancy. So that worked out well. Um, I'm actually trying to keep some of this on. You know, I actually like, I'm, I'm a slim girl, so I like like having a little bit of, a little bit of jiggle, you know what I'm saying? But uh, we'll see. Breastfeeding just kind of, just kind of, you know, sucks me dry. So we'll see. Um, that has nothing to do with anything. But yeah, so sickness subsided. Um, I started having back aches, hip aches, child. And I never had that with Trinity. Like I never had those issues with Trinity. But with this pregnancy, it was just like that. Second, second trimester is supposed to be the most comfortable and like easygoing trimester. And it, and it was for the most part because I wasn't sick anymore. So I was just happy about that. However, um, yeah, I had like back aches, back hip aches, like the back of my hips were aching, which was very strange. But um, yeah. And then we went to Disneyland like crazy people. Uh, we went to California for our friend's uh, wedding and then we went to Disneyland. And so I walked around Disneyland till I couldn't walk anymore. I don't even know how I made it through that day, but I did. And we had a great time. It was absolutely wonderful trinity enjoyed it and i didn't know when when was the next time we we're going to be able to do that so i was like let me just thug it out we'll go we'll do disneyland if i need to sit down i'll sit down if i need to get a uh, wheelchair i'll get a wheelchair but i'm gonna do this for my baby girl so we did that had a great time um had a great time in california period uh of course per usual and then uh let's see third trimester came about I was huge. Mind you, I started showing, as soon as I found out I was pregnant, I looked in the mirror and I was like, my stomach is actually pretty puffy. And I was only six weeks. I think it was just like, um, inflammation, not inflammation, but just like 
bloating or something like that. But as soon as I found out I was pregnant, like my stomach never went back down. It was puffy and then it just got bigger from there. So by the time my third trimester came along, I was, for me, I, I felt like I was huge. Um, so, uh, so yeah, belly was pretty big. Back was still hurting a bit. I was still working, still doing my daily thing, my responsibilities. Um, still chasing around a three, three and a half year old. Um, and that was one of the biggest difference between this pregnancy and last pregnancy. And I, I have a thing on because we just took her for an EKG um, follow up. But uh, one of the biggest differences is I had a toddler that I had to still entertain and take care of. Whereas my first pregnancy, I had no prior children. So, you know, it was a little easier. I could rest when I needed to. I could come home and just go to sleep if I wanted to. But this time around, I, I couldn't necessarily do that. So um, that was one of the struggles. But we made it through. Um, the doctor did tell me that for their practice, they do not do VVAX, which is birth, vaginal birth after a C-section. Um, and as you guys may know, Trinity was a uh, breach at the time of birth or whatever. By her due date, she was still breech. Her stomach was at the top of my belly instead of the body, bottom of my belly. And um, she basically had to be born through C-section. And so I know you guys probably want to comment, oh, they could have tried turning her, blah, blah, blah. I was not about to even try doing any of that. I'd rather just have the C-section, have her be born healthy, than to try to manipulate and do all that. So um, she was born healthy, and so I figured I know what to expect with a C-section, so why not do it again? Uh, they did say I could go to another doctor's office, another doctor's network, and they could do a VBAC, but there they do not perform VBACs. And so I chose to just go ahead and have another C-section. Again, I know what to expect, so shouldn't be that hard, right? Wrong. <laughs> uh, it wasn't. It wasn't horrible. I'm. I'm just being dramatic, and I'm only a week like postpartum, so I'm still a little like, you know. Anyway, my um, due date was February twenty second, and uh, they wanted to do it a week before so that I don't go into labor, and so they scheduled me for February seventeenth. That was going to be her birthday, and so I was able to prepare and. You know, I knew what her actual birthday was going to be. It wasn't going to be a surprise. Like, my appointment was set, everything. So, uh, right now, I just have my hair up in a bun. I have a, some glue or something there. But, yeah, I have lots of locks right now. But I did get my hair retightened right before I went to the hospital, the day before. So, I'll give you guys, like, a hair update real soon. But, yeah, my bun is just a little crazy right now. Never mind that. Um... So, yeah, I already knew what day we were supposed to go in, what time I was able to prepare, which is good for me because I like surprises, but I'm also a very organized and scheduled person. Like, I don't mind knowing what's going to happen so I can prepare for it. Uh, so, yeah, that's, that's also another downside of having a C-section, depending on what type of person you are. There's no element of surprise. There's no, oh, my water broke. It's like, no, it's very scheduled. It's very like, okay, this is what's going to happen. Boom, boom, bang, bang. And so, <laughs> went into the hospital at 5.30 in the morning. So now we're going to start to, I kind of gave you a brief overview of my actual pregnancy. There was nothing crazy that happened other than some pain, some aches here and there. Um, I'm actually going to be selling a lot of my maternity clothes on Poshmark. I will link that down below. So keep an eye out um, there for a lot of the my maternity clothes I barely wore. Like some of those outfits I didn't wear and then some I only wore once or twice. Like tops, dresses, stuff like that. And so I'll be posting all that stuff really soon. Uh, so yeah, now let's get into the actual C-section situation. Okay. So my appointment was at 7.30 in the morning. I had to be there at 5.30, which wasn't really a big deal because I wasn't really sleeping much anyway. And so we had to figure out what we we're going to do with Trinity, who's going to watch her. That was a whole situation in and of itself. But my mom and my sister actually stayed the night with us. They, uh, watched her and her daycare was closed that day, the day of the birth of her sister, because it was President's Day. Um, so they stayed with us, they took care of her in the morning and then eventually they brought her over to the hospital. And so, um, I get to the hospital, some changes, it's the same hospital that I had Trinity at, but they changed some things. Um, number one is they actually had me like wipe down my entire body with these wipes, like antibacterial wipes, which is, is good. Like cleanliness is great. You know, nobody wants to be infected with anything or have any complications because of that. Um, so they had... They have their patients uh, wipe down their entire body with these wipes, which was, it was okay. Um, not a big deal. Of course, my husband had to help me because I couldn't reach everything, but <laughs> um, we did that and that was done. Um, I went into the room. They started the IV, which 
first time around sucked and this time it sucked even double okay let me tell y'all do y'all see my arm right here that is a bruise from one of the, the, well, the final poking of my ID. They were actually able to finally put it in right here after they stuck me up here somewhere, over here, over here, and then finally over here. I got stuck four times. And I don't know if it's just me, but that needle, I hate, I despise. I feel like that's the worst part of the actual C-section surgery is the IV. They stuck me once, my vein like collapsed or something like that. I guess I have small veins and hard to find veins, whatever. That didn't work. So they took it out, stuck me again, took that out, called somebody else in there. She stuck me again, took that out, called somebody else in there. She stuck me again. By the fourth try, I was done. I was like, this is not the way I want to start my like birthing process or, you know, like the day that I'm going to meet my daughter. Like, this is not how I wanted to start it off. And so I just kind of just got really frustrated. I was in pain and I just like started crying like a little bit. I was so upset. It was mostly just being upset that I just kept having to get poked. Like what it was like, why? This is this is the the start of the situation. This should be like the easiest thing that happens today. But for whatever reason, it was not. And I'm like, is this a sign of how this whole thing is gonna go or what? So I was very upset, very saddened by that. And uh, my husband was kind of just laughing, like, oh, it's just a, like a bee sting. I'm like, when's the last time you had an IV? I know you work in the metal f medical field, but you know nothing about what this feels like. But of course he's trying to downplay it, trying to keep me calm. And I'm just like, no, this is not fun. I was not happy. So eventually they got it in, started giving me the drugs. That stuff burned as soon as it, well, no, the first, the, the flu is, felt good they were actually like kind of cold like it felt kind of cold running up my arm um but then they started giving me medicine and that burn it was horrible um and yeah so I was good just sitting there for like an hour and then we go into the uh surgery room and I get my spinal I was re-watching my video of the first time I got a spinal and I said that it was just kind of not horrible it's kind of just a bee sting kind of thing this time around it felt a little more painful surprisingly because when you've done it before it shouldn't be that bad the second time around but of course we're working with all new people and so that could have contributed to it as well that bee sting was a bit more than just a bee sting okay <laughs> uh it was just horrible and as soon as they put me in the room I don't know if it was just cold or if I was nervous I just started like sh kind of shaking and it was just it was not cute but I thugged it out they poked me did whatever they had to do laid me down put in my catheter um, I started feeling the tingly feet and tingly legs and everything kind of went numb. And, uh, he, you know, the anesthesiologist gave me extra meds and I was just kind of like loopy a little bit. And then they started, you know, doing their job, basically <laughs> opening me up and all that fun stuff. Um, of course there's a, a sheet in front of you, a curtain that you can't see anything. My husband was in, I told him to kind of peek over, let me know what was going on. And he looked and he was like, yeah, they're working on it. Like they're, they're getting there. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure whatever he saw was not very pretty. But um, after about 30 minutes or so, um, I started feeling a huge amount of pressure to the point where I felt like I could not breathe, okay? And I literally said, like, I can't breathe. I had uh, oxygen in, but I just felt like I just I couldn't breathe. I was just like, oh, my God, like, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. And there was like, you know, take it easy. Take deep breaths. Like, they're pushing the baby down to get her out. And so that's pushing on my lungs. And I was just like, oh, God, Lord. <laughs> get this baby out of me. You know? um, so, yeah, that just lasted for a few minutes. And before I knew it, I heard a little cry. The baby was out. And I got to see her. She was so cute. Just a cute little adorable little doll. And I'll show you guys her another time. But um, she was just absolutely adorable. Looks like my first baby when she was born. And um, yeah, they like wiped her down. Another thing that has changed is they used to clean them immediately, like give them a bath, everything to get the kind of white stuff off of their skin. This time around, they wiped her down, but they didn't actually give her a bath until, until eight hours, actually. Eight hours afterwards. Hello, my dear. So yeah, baby was cute. They didn't clean her. They uh, gave her to me sooner than I expected. They kind of wheeled me back into the room that I started in when they gave me an IV. My husband was already there with the baby, which was just strange because last time I had to wait like an hour to get the baby or what felt like an hour. Um, so he was there just holding the baby like it was nothing. Like, 
boom. And so I started breastfeeding and that went well. Um, they eventually put me in the room that we're going to be in and uh, that was fine. I mean, my legs were still numb for a while, maybe for a couple hours. And during that time, which I didn't mention last time, the nurses will come in and they will push on your belly to basically get your uterus to shrink down to its original size, like help with that process. Not comfortable at all. But I remember the first time around, it was it was brutal. Like the lady literally put her arm on my abdominal and like scraped down like that. This time it was a lot more gentle. They just kind of pushed a little bit. It was very uncomfortable, but nowhere near as comfortable as the first time around. I forgot to mention that in my last uh, birth video. Um, but yeah, so they do that. Of course, they put your big, big pad on and they put give you the belly wrap and all that fun stuff. So I was just kind of there chilling. Um, my mom, my sister, my daughter finally came in. Trinity was very excited to see her. I'll insert a video clip of when she first saw her little sister. Um, she was very excited, big smile, big everything. So that was a beautiful moment. Um, breastfeeding went well. Um, the baby was very sleepy though, I noticed. And so sometimes I would have to wake her to breastfeed. Um, she would be going three hours and would just be sleeping. <laughs> so the first couple of days before my milk came in, she was just like kind of out of it. But once my milk came in, child, that girl was eating like every hour. Okay. Uh, yeah, she was very much so satisfied with the milk. <laughs> and so um, when she was born, she was seven pounds, 12 ounces, which is 19 and a half inches. And so that's a pretty good sized baby compared to my first daughter. She was eight pounds, one ounce, 20 inches and three fourths, 20 and three fourths. Yeah, something like that. Um, so she was a little bigger, a little longer. And so um, we stayed in the hospital for two nights, went home on the third day. Uh, this girl poops and pees all day, every day. And so that's fun. Uh, <laughs> what else? She's very chill, very relaxed. She squirms a little bit and then she just kind of goes back to sleep. Uh, she doesn't cry. She doesn't cry really at all. She'll whine like, hey, if she needs something, but she doesn't really cry. So, so far, so good. Overall, the second pregnancy was a little tougher. The second C-section was a little tougher, but it's all it's all relative and it's you know you dug it out you do what you have to do deal with it and then it'll just be a thing of the past and you have a beautiful result of a beautiful baby and yeah her name is journey simone and uh she's here and we're very excited everyone is just like so enamored by her she's such a pretty little baby and again she's super sweet but let's see if that lasts i'm gonna do like a little three month update and let y'all know <laughs> how uh how that's lasting <laughs> so yeah um again i'm gonna try my best to get back to these videos and just doing the things that i enjoy sharing our experience being second time parents and um just get back to it you know what i mean so if you guys have any requests for special videos again i'm gonna do a hair update please don't mind the scarf y'all i'm one week one week postpartum what, what can you say um yeah i'm gonna do a hair update real soon some hairstyles, all that fun stuff. And then I'm gonna actually be doing some like postpartum outfits and things like that. So stay tuned and uh, yeah, we'll get to it. Happy 2020, you guys. I know I'm like a month late, but it's all right. Uh, hopefully you guys are doing well and I'll see y'all in the next video. Peace.